Hey guys, let's talk about the Savage Raiding meta, and let's talk about it very candidly here, because that conversation has been raging on given the world first clears and a significant amount of controversy sparked by P8S's first phase's DPS check being extremely and that is no joke, extremely demanding. Now people want something spicy early on and so I'm gonna give it to you. If you want to know what I would be looking at if you aren't meeting DPS checks, if you are literally looking at some job swap, get your caster DPS on Black Mage and your range physical DPS on Dancer. The numbers indicate that that is incredibly, significantly, massively more relevant than the quit warrior and reroll gunbreaker memes would have you know. But, and it is a massive Nicki Minaj size but, is before people say I'm a servant to the meta hang on. I'm gonna be very direct here, unless you are specifically going for a weak first clear of the entire savage tier, meaning five, six, seven, and eight complete phases and everything, it is pretty incredibly pointless to fixate on this and it's kind of unfortunate to say that because I see a lot of even more casual raid groups or independent raiders in PF absolutely swear by the current statistical makeup of P8S clears. A fight that most groups aren't going to even see for like two months from now. But for them to fixate on that that's nonsense. By the time that they get to this door boss, they will have weeks of upgrades, which I'd agree. One single ring and maybe a helmet from tombstones is not going to add up to that much personally from your own contributions. I agree with you. But you spread that across an entire party of eight people, those bonuses will add up. And so for most groups, this really shouldn't be a concern at all. This should be completely off of your radar. What absolutely will make a difference though is are the players in your group playing what they want to play? I mean, for multiple reasons, like obviously happy players beget higher morale, which makes a team want to play together. And obviously if you want to play together, you hang out in Discord all the time. That's going to make the group just a more pleasant experience. I, I think that there's a lot more to this game than just clearing the content. For me personally, it's a social thing. I love that part of it so much. Um, because if someone is playing something that they intrinsically enjoy and love, then they will care more and want to improve. Like telling a summoner or a red mage enjoyer to just go black mage is, in everything outside of bleeding edge number crunching, absolutely ridiculous. And I think that you'd be hard pressed to find anyone of sane mind that would disagree with that. They'd be like, yeah, that is totally ridiculous. And I'm talking about even people that I know that I am friends with that have cleared this raid with like the first week. They have even agreed with me saying, yeah, that's absolutely dumb. But let's take a closer look at two examples that are near and dear to my heart. Sage versus Scholar, because everyone here knows that I'm playing Barrier Healer. Which one of those though should you take? Which one am I taking into my own rating? Which has been a totally wild week. I have been so thrown off my game. I might talk about that in a later video. But according to the clear data, in terms of my pick, I should absolutely 100% not ever I need any, under any circumstance play Sage. It has a quarter of the clears to Scholar. It's clearly awful, right? Or another one that is making rounds, including on memes, is Warrior is unplayable trash and that you should play Gunbreaker or quit. Look at how close the numbers are for Warrior and Gunbreaker. If this is the difference between you clearing or not clearing, uh, what's the nice way of saying you have bigger problems? This is a 100% DPS difference and has been way overblown to the point that anyone looking at the numbers should raise an eyebrow at people making those claims. It's like, what? Moving on though from that, I can make a ton of different reasons why each of these job picks are exceptionally strong in their particular niche. Such as continuing the Sage versus Scholar example, Sage is a cognitive decision that I've made. When I was asking, what, am, what is cool playing? I It's just like, I chose Sage, and weighing the pros and the cons, what I personally preferred is worth its own discussion tomorrow, you can take examples like the utility of having Haima as its own separate tank cooldown that soaks up the bleed tank busters we're seeing this tier. It is extremely, wildly beautiful. You crace this Haima, it is so strong, I cannot emphasize it enough. And that though, the point is, is a separate from the absolutely powerful area of effect cooldown Panheima. 
This is basically the equivalent to like Scholar Seraph casting the Seraphic, like whatever you call it, Seraphic um, Veil. That's their single target. And then Constellation, which is going to be their AoE. That's basically Hyma and Panhyma. Sage can obviously split them. Scholar, however, cannot split its Seraph Fairy into those two different skills. More examples from there, but that's just one example. And that's a very, very relevant one this tier. Now on the flip side, am I saying Scholar is bad? Just because I know people will be worried about that. Scholar's expedient is undeniable. It is brilliantly powerful, and among other benefits, like if you have a bard and a warrior, can supercharge its shield to be absolutely gigantic and delete mechanics. So Scholar isn't without pros too. But what I'm really trying to drive home here is Sage is not useless either. Incredibly far from it, actually. Now, if you want the jobs that I think are in the toughest spot right now, I'd put my money on Machinist and Paladin. Sorry, Machinists are not going to be surprised at me saying that. You know I support you guys, you know I love Machinists. But both of those jobs really do have a handful of clears already, so even that is dumb for me to say. Clearly they are capable. But Machinists' problem remains exactly the same as before. No utility, no mobility, and its damage is just not better than when you compare it to others that do that damage and bring utility and mobility of their own. Like, there's one... There is one specific world that I'd take a machinist in, assuming that all of them were the same for fun for me. That situation is if my entire group is doing poorly and I can't trust them to represent my buffs well. Outside of that, I'd choose Dancer with its consistent and independent utility over Machinist every single time. Curing Waltz is great, Barrier from the Improv is great, the mobility is great, and Reg Progression, it's basically game changing. The answer is very, very strong. And his damage is in the numbers top 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 tier of the range physical category now paladin suffers from some problems like cover has been extremely niche since omega raids and stormblood which yeah it was fantastic back then but ever since uh, no but with the damage over time tank busters sheltron doesn't even feel that amazing and like how are you gonna like shield block some of those things but like it, more examples than that but hollowed ground is another thing it won't save you from these new style of tank busters we're having extra mitigation to ch kitchen sink is very helpful and paladin basically doesn't have one of those buttons every other tank has one more like personal defensive than paladin does obviously paladin has more group utility you guys know what i mean here but the lower damage than the other tanks combined with that, which is definitely a larger disparity for sure than Warrior versus Gunbreaker, also sucks for a lot of the fights as uh, and it might be largely because a lot of fights flatly don't require that much mobility and separation from the boss. So Paladin's mobile confetti combo falls on I don't want to say deaf ears, but it falls on being largely not that great. And Paladin, if we're diving into super specifics, Paladin is dependent on critting confetti or that is still a big deal for Paladins. I know a lot of people are going to be like, what? How does he know that? Y'all, I talk to people all damn day about this game. <laughs> what I will do for the sake of interest though is flip the stats to healing from damage because everyone looks at the damage and few people look at this. What we can see from the healing stats is Sage is by far by a significant margin higher HPS than every uh, single other healer. That, that's a big margin though. And Paladin is higher HPS than even Warrior, which is a slight bit okay really weird to say given Vori's reputation it's like what so the damage stats aren't even really telling the full story of what's going on here behind the scenes which this really leads me into what is going to get me into hot water caster dps as in the ranged magical dps there is far more of a meta and far more of a dps gap here and i don't hear anyone really talking about it instead i see memes of warrior players going gunbreaker and sage is dropping sage for scholar why did you even add sage into the game uh yeah people are saying that and i'm like what are you kidding i love my sage but i i find this funny because apparently people are just saying this now but i'm like did no one tune in for p4s guys and, and Sage players, my fellow Sage players and Scholar players, no, you know that's true. Where was this love before? <laughs> but my point is Black Mage is hand over fist absolutely undeniably doing significantly massively more damage than Summoner and Red Mage. It's not even close. Like Warrior versus Gunbreaker as I was close. If we're going to say that that is super far apart, we are literally talking about like Black Mage is like here in this current dimension and then red mage is off in a black hole in like the 90th dimension and summoner is god knows where <laughs> it's like this is a significant 
DPS difference. So if you aren't making DPS checks and you really, really want to play the finger pointing game, which I again don't recommend, I wouldn't point at tanks or healers. Instead, I'd be zoned in on Black Mage as my choice of magical range DPS and Dancer, who's also doing really, really well, as my choice of physical range DPS. Which remember, they also have the mobility and that beautiful, beautiful utility. Which again, leads me into saying, Machinist needs help, please. And so it's just like what I said at the start of this video. It looks totally silly to me when people fixate on the tanks and healers that are extremely close to one another, or for Sage makes up for the lower damage, which is still only slightly lower, by bringing much, much, much more healing. Interestingly enough, White Mage is still really, really low on that in comparison. Conclusion time. At the end of the day, you need to play what you want to play, as does the rest of your group. The incredible majority of the time, it's damage downs, deaths, mishandled mechanics, poorly executed openers and rotations, uh, not using using food, not using potions, uh, raid buff timings being off, these things will cost you way, way, way more than a job swap. Like, I cannot emphasize that enough. Even with the numbers laid bare, I would check and see if we could get the mechanics down and perfected before I asked some, I don't know, like Tom, random example of name, I, I know Tom in my red group, but ask Tom to go Dancer and Larry to go Black Mage. That does it for this video. It'd make me super happy if you guys dropped a beautiful, handsome, hot warrior on that like button and can't add that subscribe button. I'm dumb, but I hope that you all have a beautiful day. But yeah, don't let the meta ruin your day. It's all meant to be fun, right?